What is up, CUSA family? It is me, Cody Andrini, the marketing coordinator here at the Credit Union, excited to come to you with the new episode of our new vlog. As you may have noticed, we haven't been doing our weekly vlogs as we've become accustomed to, and I wanna take a second real quick, I wanna give you a reason as to why that is. We want these vlogs to be the most beneficial tool that they can be to help you. And so when we go into these vlogs, we wanna make sure that we have enough time to give you the content and a good explanation. And also we wanna make sure we have time to give you announcements and we wanna make sure that we're letting you know what is going on here at the credit union. So we've decided that we're gonna to go to a monthly format to make sure that we give ourselves the time to produce the best vlog for you. So on the last Friday of every month, these will be posted on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and you'll be able to go check them out and Guys, like I say at the end of every vlog, and I'm going to say it at the end of this vlog, leave us some comments. Let us know what financial questions you have so that way we can tailor these vlogs to meet you where you're at and to help you reach your financial goals. With all that being said, I want to hop right into the topic. We started last vlog talking about ways to manage your transportation budget. We talked about how there's three main types of transportation and I want to go a little bit deeper into each one of these and that way we can understand what's the best one for us because guys all of our lives are different we come from different places and so because of that every situation is different and so I can't tell you what the best way for you is but what we can do is equip you and give you the pros and cons and let you decide and that's what we're gonna do so first thing we want to talk about is buying a car and buying a car is the most typical and it is the one that every 16 year old is super excited to get their first car even though it's usually uh, not the best car. I mean, it can be an old rusted out bucket on wheels, but that is your first car and there is a sense of pride that comes with ownership of a vehicle. And uh, we talked about my first car, Rhonda. We talked about how I was so fond of her and it was just great memories. And now every time I see an old trailblazer on the road, I'm like, ah, I miss Rhonda. It's just, it's just owning a vehicle is something special for sure. But is it always the best? Maybe. So let's look at some of the good things. So good things, guys, it's your car. If you want to trick it out and you want to put the the cool headlights and the tail lights and you want to lift it and you want to put that radio system and all these things that we like to do to our vehicles you can do it it's going to be yours after you pay it off you are working toward complete ownership once you finish the term of your loan that is your vehicle and that's exciting and it's just a sense of ownership and it's the ability to live your life, basically. You don't have to worry about, you know, if the dog gets in the car and scratches the seat up or, uh, you know, your kids made a mess in the vehicle. You don't have to worry about all that. It's your car, you can live your life in it, and you can maintain that car the way you see fit. It's a great option. The backside of this is that on top of your car note, you have to make sure that you can afford the insurance. Guys, I worked as a car salesman for about a year, and I cannot tell you the times that I have seen people, mostly my younger generation, so pay attention closely, do not leave the car lot with an insurance note higher than your car note. Come on, man. But it happens. You gotta make sure that you can afford that insurance. You gotta make sure that you can afford the maintenance. Because what good is that Mercedes Benz if it's sitting in the yard because you can't afford the oil changes on it? You got to make sure that you can afford the gas. Gas is expensive. And if, you, if you're someone who drives a lot, getting that, that low mileage vehicle may not be the best thing for you. You may want to look at something with a little bit better fuel economy. So all of these things play into it. Yes, you own it, but the cost of owning also means that you're responsible for the note, for the insurance, for the maintenance, for the fuel. So owning a car means more than being able to afford the notes. Next thing I wanna talk about is leasing. Leasing, I feel like gets a really bad rep and for no reason. 
leasing when it's the right person is a great option. So what a lease does is you don't technically own that car. We're familiar with leasing. We lease apartments, we lease homes. We're familiar with leasing. In the vehicle world, you don't own that vehicle and you never will. You will drive the car for the term of the lease and then you will return that and get another car. And so the good things about this is typically you're going to have a lower down payment and you're going to have a lower payment every month. That's typically the, the good side. That's typically what is drawing about the lease is the lower out-of-pocket costs. With that said, there are some downsides to leasing. Because you're never going to own that vehicle, because it is never going to be fully yours, you do not have control of it. You will have a mileage restriction. This mileage restriction is usually based on the industry standard, somewhere around 12,000, but every lease is different. If you go over the miles agreed upon, you may have to pay back per mile that you went over at the end of your lease. If this vehicle comes back with more than just normal wear and tear, you're going to be responsible for that. So it can end up costing you more if you are not prepared to abide by the rule of the lease. What I would definitely say is that if you cannot comfortably abide by the lease, don't try it because it can end up messing you up big time. That being said, a few things. You'll still have to deal with fuel, so pay attention to that, but you will typically not lease a vehicle that is not under complete bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty, meaning when maintenance comes around, if something happens to it, if something breaks on it, that's not your responsibility. You bring it to the dealership, they will maintain it. You will usually never own a vehicle, or lease a vehicle, rather, outside of that bumper to bumper warranty. So this is a really good option for someone who, who usually buys a new vehicle every couple years anyway, or, or, you know, just maybe someone who likes to stay in the newest vehicle. This is a great way to do that. It's a great way to not have to worry about maintenance. It's a great way to not have to worry about fixing breakdowns. And then the last one we want to talk to you about is kind of the newest trend. And it's kind of scary for some, but I'm telling you, it's not as scary and it's not as bad as you think it is. And that is rideshare services. That's Uber, that's Lyft, services like that. And I can tell you that I have seen a trend recently of people who are, and I'm in the Lafayette office, so I'm talking Lafayette area, but I've seen a trend where people are not even owning or leasing. They are strictly Ubering and lifting to work and to the store and to wherever it is that they go. Now, this is great for a bunch of reasons. One, you don't have to have good credit. If you want to lease or if you want to buy a vehicle and you want to have decent notes, you have to have that credit score in check. If you're in a situation where you have not yet gotten your credit score in line, then Uber and Lyft gives you this way to be brought to where you need to be and go where you need to go without having the credit score. So that's one. So then you don't have to pay for gas, you don't have to pay for a car note, you don't have to pay for insurance, you don't have to pay for maintenance. There are a ton of, pro and then it's even better than the bus because with the bus, you gotta go wait to the bus stop. This, you punch it in on your phone and it literally goes to you where you're at. You get in their car, they take you, drop you off. It's a phenomenal service. But there are, just as, just as there are tons of good things, there's also a, a decent list of, of reasons why this may not be the best for you. One of those being, guys, you don't have a car. And uh, if you're anything like me, like I am one of those kind of people who, like if we're if a bunch of people's going, they want to carpool, you're carpooling in my car because when I'm ready to leave, I want to go now. And that's just how I am. So if you ever want to carpool with me, you're coming in my car. But the, the, the kickback on this is you're going to have to wait for that Uber ride. And if you're in the middle of downtown and it's a Friday night and it's a busy night, you may have to wait a little while before you can hop into the vehicle. The prices kind of go up and down. When it's a high, uh, a high prime time, they will raise the prices. The prices go down whenever there's not so much action going on. Uh, you have to keep a cell phone on you that is charged. If you do not keep your cell phone charged, you will get stuck. And so that's no fun. Then also, 
you're going to want to make sure that you're kind of in a in a city because you know a lot of these services don't really reach out uh, outside of the city some of them do and, and depending on how far out the city limits you are but i'm talking for people and especially college students or people who really don't go that many places you go to work you go to class wherever you go and then you go home this is a great tool and a great way to help you save money while you're saving up to lease or to purchase a car it's a great beginner step and it's a, it's a way for us to not have to feel pressured to own something right now if financially we're not able so there it is guys three different types of of transportation and you have to look at your budget you have to assess needs versus wants and then you also have to assess what is going to be the most beneficial honestly if you're a parent with four children i do not expect you to call a lift but also if you're a college student and you own your own and you don't really go anywhere, then what's the purpose of owning this big car note right now? It's all about what's best and what you need, because right now we're trying to get this budget lowered. We're trying to get these things in line now. So that way later on, we can be a little more free. So with that being said, I want to hop in, give you a couple announcements real quick. Uh, we are in the middle of a campaign that I'm excited about. It is the Show Some Love campaign. It is February and Cupid is running rampant with his little bow and arrow. And, and what we want you to do is we want you to show some love to your credit union on social media. Super simple. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and we will enter your name to win a five quart air fryer. Guys, air fryers are the best cooking gadget ever. I love mine. I am not one to keep gadgets out on my counter, but this one has its own special prime location because it is incredible and we want to help you win one. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and we will enter your name and do it before the 1st of March. We will be drawing on that 1st of March. Second campaign I want to tell you about is the New Year New Ride. While we're talking about transportation, let me take a minute and just let you know that the rates here at CUSA for auto loans are fire right now. And we want you to hop in. If you are ready to hop into that new ride, give us a call, go to the website. We have a contactless process. Super quick, most cases we can get it done in one day. You go to the website, you put in your loan app, one of our loan representatives will be contacting you and we can get you there and we can get you there cheaper. I'm telling you, Trust us, call CUSA, new year, new ride, let's do it. Now, before we go, I want to take a minute and give you a review that one of our, one of our members sent in. I really like to, from time to time, read these to you because we want you to know that your money is in a safe place and that the people that are managing your accounts here really care about you. So I want to read this that came in and then we'll be right back to finish up. Previously, I was a member of a different credit union. After eight years of being a member with them, I reached out for a small helping hand and was shot down with complete arrogance. Feeling frustrated and belittled, I decided to make a change in my banking. I called the Lafayette CUSA branch and immediately felt welcomed. Within minutes, the gentleman opened a savings and checking account for me. My new debit card was made on location and available for pickup that day. He also assisted me with completing my direct deposit and creating my Card Valet app account. The fast and generous customer service he gave was refreshing. From then on, anytime I've ever needed any questions answered or help with a matter, everyone in that branch was so polite, sweet, and welcoming. It feels amazing to be able to bank with people who always go out of their way to help versus my previous credit union who always made me feel like a bother. I recommend CUSA to all of my colleagues because they are first in class in customer service. All right, guys, that's about going to do it for this episode of the vlog. So as always, like, share, comment, let us know what you want to see next. And we will come to you in March on the last Friday of March. And we will let you know about all the exciting things coming up. And we are going to get into another hot topic. You guys have a great weekend and we'll see you next time.